Джорджа с Фиби. Вот если бы сюда бы он бы долетел, вот сюда, Платонки же нашей не было бы. Вот, видно, бочка прорвана, херачит с нее огонь. Вон огонь прям, это, топливо вытекает, и огонь горит. Вот она, это самая основная, большая был удар. А еще две параллельно вон горят. Ukrainian air forces and artillery would bury the Russian soldiers at Vovchansk plant. Expert. Hundreds of Russian troops are surrounded in a chemical plant in Vovchansk the main battleground in Russia's northern offensive. This plant is not very large. There could be up to 200 Russians there, says Ukrainian military expert Roman Svitan. On the air of Channel 24, he expressed the opinion that Ukrainian rockets and artillery would bury the invaders at this plant. The Russians wanted to see Vovchansk and die. So the defense forces will have to make this wish come true. Our troops will have to implement this last thought of the Russians, says Svitan. At least 30 of the Russians surrendered over the weekend. Vovchansk was the first major target of Russia's northern offensive, which kicked off on May the 10th and may have aimed to ultimately capture Kharkiv, a city of 1.4 million, 25 miles south of the border. But the Russian northern grouping of forces, tens of thousands of soldiers strong, never got past Vovchansk. Several Ukrainian brigades, including the elite 82nd Air Assault Brigade, raced north to meet the Russians. Freshly rearmed with munitions rush shipped from the United States, the Ukrainians fought the Russians street by street, building by building, and halted the advance in late May. And now the Ukrainian Air Forces has joined the battle. The Air Forces fighters MiG 29s, Sukhoi, Su 27s, or both are lobbing American or French made precision glide bombs at the plant. Rob Lee, an analyst with the Foreign Policy Research Institute in Philadelphia, identified three videos depicting Ukrainian glide bombs striking the plant's main complex recently. One Russian blogger likened the fighting in Vovchansk to two of the most brutal battles in Russia's 28-month wider war on Ukraine, the long Russian sieges of Bakhmut and Avdiivka. The Russian Air Force dropped scores of glide bombs a day on Avdiivka, gradually reducing the city to rubble and compelling the Ukrainian garrison to retreat in February. The bad news, the blogger wrote, is that the enemy has a lot of his own guided hammer bombs, which also pose a serious problem. The night of June 17th to 18th, the Ukrainian defense forces attacked Russian oil depots in the Rostov region and Krasnodar region of Russia with domestically produced Neptune missiles. These facilities are located within the range of American Atoms missile defense systems, but the United States prohibits their use on the territory of the aggressor state. This is discussed in the analysis of the American Institute for the Study of War. They recalled that, according to the Suspilnoy publication, Ukraine modified the Neptunes to hit ground targets, in particular, to attack the oil terminal of Yugneftikimtransit LLC in the port city of Chushka, Krasnodar territory. The Russian Ministry of Defense did not confirm the strike, but said it intercepted a Ukrainian Neptune missile in an unspecified area. In addition, Ukrainian media reported an attack by SBU drones on the Azovsk and Azov Neftoproduct oil terminals in Azov, Rostov region. The fires there have not been put out for two days now. According to Ukrainian media, these oil depots together have 22 fuel tanks, up to 60 tons of petroleum products pass through them per month, and the tanks can simultaneously hold up to 30,000 cubic meters of petroleum products. Analysts noted that Ukrainian troops used Neptune missiles to strike an oil depot in the Krasnodar region because the United States still does not allow long-range weapons it provides, such as Atoms missiles, to be used to strike legitimate targets inside Russia. 
Because of these restrictions, Ukraine modified its missiles for two years while the occupiers enjoyed protection from Western weapons.